Hey, what's up? This is Armour3 here. Face masks, to an extent, are part of techwear. They're probably something that you will have seen used in techwear outfits. From an aesthetic perspective, they help convey anonymity, protection from the elements, and I think there's an anti-social aspect to them as well. All of these things have some kind of connection to techwear. I would say, in general, these aren't crucial for day-to-day -day wear. It's unlikely to be that cold and wet that you really need to cover your face a lot of the time. We don't quite live in a dystopian society where you have to go around concealing yourself from the government and facial recognition cameras and such. And while a lot of the time they certainly do look antisocial, people just might think you look a bit suspicious and want to avoid you. Nonetheless, I'm going to go through a couple of different options here because to greater or lesser extents, they can provide some utility. For photos, they can look cool and I know some people don't like showing their face online, so that definitely necessitates some kind of mask. But either way, I'm going to look through a couple of different options and the extent to which these can be worn in tech wear outfits, either for utility purposes or just for aesthetic ones. The first on this list is the Humble Hygiene Mask. These have very similar designs often. You'll have two loops that go over each ear and then a piece of material in the middle which goes over your nose and mouth. But they do vary hugely in terms of brand and to an extent the style. From the disposable masks that you can pick up in big multi-packs from Amazon, all the way up to high fashion brands and some high high-end streetwear brands like Off-White. For techwear purposes, these offer the least functionality. They're basically just for anonymity and for aesthetic purposes, or if you're wearing one of those streetwear branded ones for a little bit of flex as well. You'll see these worn most frequently in Asian culture because they are very popular in Asia. They've been popularized by people like Keith Ape who have worn them in music videos and stuff. Although the real purpose of these masks um, although they're called hygiene masks or pollution masks, are not to protect the wearer from pollution or germs or whatever outside them, but to do the opposite. They're worn as a courtesy for people that are ill to not infect the people around them. So unless you are actually sick, sick, or you don't mind people thinking that you are, these are really a photo only thing for me. And even then it's important to be aware of the context and the actual reason that you would wear a mask like this. Next, let's look at something a little bit more functional rather than just for posing in pictures with. This is the neck gaiter. As the name would imply, you don't just have to wear this over your face, which gives you a little bit of extra flexibility. You can wear this just around your neck if you need to talk to someone, you wanna appear less antisocial, or it's not cold enough to justify having something pulled all the way over your face. But having it around your neck is still going to insulate you. But in particularly harsh conditions, or if you want that sweet watchdog style anonymity, you can pull this up over your face and it of course does then become a face mask. I have a cheap Amazon one which was £4 or something, but there's loads of different brands that carry things like these. It's very common amongst outdoor brands. You'll find some cool branded ones from Arcteryx for example. North Face have some decent ones, lots of snow sports brands as well. Even Acronym have come out with their admittedly very expensive choice for the neck gaiter. In these, look for either very stretchy materials or some kind of toggle to help secure them if you plan on wearing this over your face, as otherwise you will find it a little bit difficult to keep it secure. There are face masks out there designed for sporting use too, which of course can be applied to tech wear. Often these things don't really have the same flexibility as a neck gaiter, they are so solely designed to be worn over the face. You'll find some streetwear brands will take up this kind of style. Supreme and Bape are very famous examples. You probably will have seen those before. And they will have a Velcro closure at the back. So you can very nicely secure these onto your face. These are quite commonly worn in snow sports as well. So that's quite a good area to look in. The advantage of these is while they will give you a bit of cold and most importantly wind protection, because they can be unfastened so easily, you don't have to wear them all the time. You can very easily take them off and keep them in the pocket. There are also versions which go over the head in a similar fashion to the neck gaiter, but are designed specifically to be worn over the face. I found a great example of this in the form of the Nike Strike football snood. This one you can see at the top is shaped, so it's gonna sit over your ears, it's gonna keep them warm, but more importantly, keep it attached to your face quite nicely. And it has a breathable mesh section at the front as well. One of the problems of face masks is if you're wearing it for a long time, or if you're doing any kind of activities, you'll find that they can get quite sweaty and quite uncomfortable inside, so that's gonna help negate that. Unfortunately, this specific model is not available on the Nike UK site, but I'm gonna 
and have a little hunt around to see if it's available elsewhere. But there is a, um, a less premium looking version as well in the form of the Nike Squad. It's got a very similar shape and it's gonna behave in a very similar way. Also, this one has a few different color options so you can change the color of the Nike swoosh or there's an all olive version as well if you wanna match it up with an olive jacket. Since this style also covers the neck a little bit, this is a good option for overall skin coverage, bit of insulation as well. So if you're gonna be wearing something for a long period of time or in any kind of sporting activities, this is the right kind of thing to go for. You could also consider the balaclava. That's not exactly the same as the things that have come before in that a balaclava specifically will cover the entire head as well as the nose and mouth, leaving just the eyes visible. It's very secure, certainly the most protective and the most concealing, and in a similar fashion to those Nike hoods, you can get sportswear ones which have mesh breathable sections as well, so designed much better for long-term use. However, they have a very antisocial appearance and a negative connotation with most people with criminal activities and general shady behavior. So these are not really best worn in built up areas. This is more a out and about by yourself kind of thing or for sporting use. Um, snow sports, for example, is a perfect time to get the balaclava out. I also think they look a little bit silly by themselves. They really demand a hood of some kind to disguise the weird bald head thing that it gives you. And they're potentially not that great if you're just gonna stick one of these on for a photo either, because this is inevitably gonna give you pretty bad hat hair as soon as you put it on. So perhaps best for extreme weather only where you really do need something that's gonna cover your entire face and keep you as warm as possible. In my mind, those things there are some of the most practical or the most often seen masks in tech wear. But of course, there's a whole bunch of different things available out there. A lot of them though, for me, fall far more onto the costume side of things than genuine utility and practicality. They're things that are designed to punctuate dystopian or cyberpunk style. Things like gas masks, paintball masks, even those full cyberpunk pilot style helmets uh, like the ones that Machine 56 come out with. And of course you'll see masks and outfits where they're not physically worn by the person, but photoshopped in afterwards. A potential exception to this is the pollution mask, not the same as the hygiene mask, but something designed more for cyclists who are about in busy cities all the time. They wanna try and avoid some of those negative health effects from breathing in car fumes all the time. Definitely a use there, although you will often see these used in outfits which are not really designed to be practical for cycling. So in that scenario, it still is a little bit costumey, designed specifically for looks. Of course, when it comes to masks and face coverings, you're free to pretty much do whatever you want if your objective is to go out there and take photos with a specific style or a kind of look or even um, as a kind of dystopian or cyberpunk fantasy, you wanna put across this near future scenario that maybe isn't the one that you're living in. Masks can be a great way to do that and to transport the viewer into this different parallel world almost. But it's important to remember that, for me at least, tech wear at a very base level is about flexibility and utility and practicality to an extent. So using one of those gas masks or helmets or whatever kind of moves you away from that and towards something else. It all depends, of course, on what you want the outcome to be, whether you are purely documenting yours or someone else's outfits, or whether you are creating these stylized images for the entertainment of the viewer. So a few different options there, ranging from the more practical and more usable day-to-day -day for things that you might wear purely for aesthetics at the expense of practicality and usability. For this one, I'm interested to hear your opinions on the use of these different kinds of masks, specifically in social media content or pictures about techwear. Do you like seeing techwear combined with these more costume-like pieces for aesthetic purposes, or do you prefer things being more a straight documentation of techwear worn in real-world scenarios? Whichever side you're on, let me know down there in the comments, because. I'm interested to see where the general consensus is on this one because I feel like there's some quite strong opinions on either side. But if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like, it is much appreciated. And as always, I will catch you next week in the next one. 
Shout out to you, Lazarus. For this one, I think the best way to approach winter and very cold weather with techwear is get yourself some kind of insulated mid-layer jacket, and then you can wear a shell over the top of that. That's gonna give you a lot more flexibility than if you just try and get some big fat jacket and then you just wear a t-shirt underneath. And shout out to Steven, there is gonna be some more affordable stuff coming up soon. There's gonna be a video all about Dorai's Aaron, and there's gonna be a Taobao Techwear haul video coming up at some point as well. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you wanna catch some more stuff, there's gonna be some little square boxes going up there if I remember to put them in. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. There's gonna be loads of Techwear content coming up. Um, over the next couple of months. Might do a couple of bonus videos for you, so definitely hit the little button and you can check it out as soon as it comes out.